All right. So yesterday we introduced a little bit more about the idea of what a feudal system was. And whenever we were talking about, you know, what freedoms uh, would you give up? Um, as, let's see if I can turn that over here. That'll be close enough. Okay. So if you look at this, you know, the feudal system itself had kings. And then below the kings were churches or nobles. Below the church and nobles were knights. And below the knights were peasants. So the example that I was given was, you know, the kings moved off to the countryside away from the city. And all of these other people followed them out there. Right? Well, the kings were the only ones that were able to actually have all of this land. But then the kings weren't able to defend themselves from somebody else taking all this land. Like, it wouldn't do me any good if I bought, you know, a thousand acres worth of land and then somebody else 30 days later comes in and kills me. Well, then I've wasted all of my time and all of my money on that land and it wasn't worth my life. The same thing for a peasant. If a peasant went out there and stuck claim to five acres of land, if another peasant comes along and kills him and takes his five acres, the land wasn't worth the value of your life. Um, how many of you have ever heard of like a Ponzi scheme or like a pyramid scheme? Okay. What does that mean? Like when you, so like you like, you, you just like you hire people mm -hmm. and then you tell them like spread this one thing and sell that to them and you'll make money and then tell them like spread it to more people if that makes sense i don't know there has and to be people underneath yeah and then you're at like the very top so you end up getting all the money and then everybody yeah uh-huh pretty much that's a pretty good idea what it is yes one of like the big things in the pyramid schemes like spend money to make money uh -huh. is like one of the things and it's like there's like it's basically like a hierarchical system where yeah. it's like there's like the boss and then there's like the next people and then there's like the actual like employees yes and they uh they do like just like common goods, so they'll like do like vacuum cleaners, and they like, "Oh, this is a hit," and they'll yeah. put all this like, uh, is it a stigmatism around? Or not a stigmatism, like a, a stigma or whatever around it, and then they'll like try and sell it off for like way higher price, and then like Kirby like, vacuum cleaner. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, the king gets all the money, and then it like doesn't really get dispersed. I gotcha. So <laughs> there, and and some of the deals of like where they're like, all right. If you give five people cards with ten dollars in it, then you'll receive twenty-four cards with ten dollars in it. And you're like, well, how does that work? Because it doesn't necessarily equate. If I'm only given fifty dollars, how do I get two hundred and forty dollars? Well, like let's say it starts with Garrett in the back and gives away five cards, one, two, three, four, five, gives away five cards, one, two, three, four, five, all the way through. Well, everybody keeps making money, keeps making money, keeps making money. Then all of a sudden it gets to the tail end of it. And everybody's like, I don't want to do that anymore. So they stop. And then the last person is the one that has given away five, but received zero. Does that make sense? So it just keeps on pushing it down and down and down and down until there's nobody left to get it. So the example of feudalism and kind of how it works is the king goes out and he owns 1,000 acres worth of land. All right, because he's powerful, he's got money, he's built a castle, he's got walls, everything else is there. All right, well, then he tells <clears throat> the church and the nobles, because they're the next in line, I will lease you 300 acres of land. All right, leasing is in giving, but he still owns the land. At the end of the day, it's still his. Okay, so the church protects the king. The nobles protect the king. He gives away 600 of his 1,000 acres, still outright owns 400 of them, still technically owns the six, but it's on the loan. How much did the church and the nobles pay for that acreage? Zero. So the church needs protection. So they hire knights. They give them 100 acres, give the other knights 100 acres. They still own leasing wise 100 acres the noble same thing right here right here right here how much did the knights pay for this zero okay so they keep working they're like well i'm too busy fighting and defending for the church for the nobles for the king i need to make sure that there's somebody working my acreage that somebody's making money for me that somebody's doing the, the farming that needs to be done i'm going to give 
these peasant groups five acres a piece. That way they have their own claim to land. And then that way somebody's working my land for me. So then he starts giving away some of his acreage right here. So even if he still has 20 acres left and he gives away 80 of it, the peasants are working 80 acres of his land. It costs him zero to have that land. Other than the services he's rendering for the church, the services he's rendering for the nobles, the services he's rendering for the king. We talked about it yesterday, the four out of seven days that the peasants were working in the fields for the people above them, the knights, the church, the king. Three of those seven days, they were able to do their own bidding and work on their own fields over there. Okay, so who is the one that gets the least amount for what they're doing? The peasants, the last person at the bottom of the scheme, okay? They got land, which they would not have been able to have. And like we talked about yesterday, they got protection whenever invaders came in, but they still did all of the work, all right? And you think about that, any kind of deal, whether it's serfdom, whether it's feudalism, whether it's slavery, anything, it's all the same concept of somebody else higher up kind of owning the people that are below them this is just not called slavery. Uh, this is called feudalism. So when you think about feudalism, you think about necessarily slavery by land. Serfdom, you think of slavery by land. These people are in debt to their lives, to the king, in a roundabout way because they are selling what they have as a livelihood for acreage. Because if not, they wouldn't be able to make money. They wouldn't be able to make food. They wouldn't be able to live as a family that's there. Okay, so the whole point of feudalism is that the high up king has figured out how to gain protection. He's figured out how to gain food. He's figured out how to keep power and he's figured out how to keep land based upon this pyramid scheme that's there. So the church comes in. Well, the church offers everyone an opportunity to live and have a chance at, you know, eternal life rather than, you know, damnation. So they start requesting 10% tithe, all right? And you still kind of do this today. You just call it an offering. But when you go to church and they pass it down the row and you put money in the, in the uh, plate or the basket or whatever you have, you know, there is a, a, a giving of what you have earned back to the church the same way that they did, and it was called a 10% tithe, all right? So how many of you have ever received a paycheck from work that you've done? Got a paycheck that was in there, all right? So there's a, there's a Facebook video that I remember watching a while back, and this kid, he gets in the car. It's Friday, it's payday. He gets in the car with his dad, and his dad's already got the camera rolling. He's like, dad, dad, I got my first paycheck. I can't wait to open this thing up. I'm so excited. So the kid knows he's worked like 30 hours and he's worked for $8 an hour. So his check should be like 240 bucks. Well, then he opens it up and what happens? Faxes. And the kid's like, dad, what? And he's like, I mean, mad. Punching the seat, doing everything else. And the kid looks at it and his $240 check has gone down to $200 because he had to pay taxes. He had to pay uh, for social security, he had to pay for his health care. He had to pay for the coverages of, you know, luckily we don't have a state income tax, but other taxes that are there. And then all of a sudden, you know, what was essentially four or five hours worth of work was done for free because of taxes. Now you get that back whenever you're 65. Now, I think it is, um, whenever you retire and you get, you know, a check for not working, that's the money that you've invested early on as a loan to the government. Same thing with your health care, same thing with others. But the kid starts crying. He's like so upset because he was so proud to have earned that money. And then it was taken away from him by essentially the idea like feudalism is. Whether it be a 10% tithe, whether it be what you had to pay for your land, and all of that money scheme kind of goes the exact same. Who profits the most out of this scheme? The king does, okay? When you think of the governmental aspect of it, the king offers protection. Today we get a check, we pay taxes, the money goes to the government, but the government offers 
protection whenever you're older to not have to work as long. You know what I'm saying? You may not always see that money or you don't see that money for a really long time based upon life expectancy. But the idea that there's an, an if at the tail end of it is still kind of there. So all of these schemes, all of these ideas, all of the thought process, it still goes on the exact same way uh, that it did many, many years ago. It's just changed in the kind of the way that it is. So if we talked about feudalism, we talked about serfdom, we talked about the idea of slavery, go all the way to, you know, 1860s, right when slavery is about to end. The reason why slavery was a big deal, and we'll get into this one, you know, chapters 15, 16 with the Atlantic slave trade. <clears throat> all of these people that were used to being under serfdom, that were used to being under feudalism, that were used to being the, the pawns at the bottom of the game, whenever they immigrated over to the United States and they finally laid claim to their own land that was their own, they looked at the same schematic and like, all right, I own this land. Now I need somebody to work it for me. Okay. Native Americans didn't work out for them. So then therefore they went to another country and bought people to be able to come work for them there because that's the same process that they learned whenever they were in feudalism system. That's the same process that multiple generations had gone through. So again, it's kind of how history repeats itself. History is a learned idea about what has worked for other groups, no matter where they went to from one place to the other. We'll kind of pick up that conversation whenever we get into the Atlantic slave trade uh, that's there. Uh, but again, for some of you that weren't here, <clears throat> your assignment for today is to go to page 360 on your MyHRW. Remember your MyHRW, if you're at school, you can use hmo.svill.us and just type it in. If you're at home, you need to log in using s.first.last.svill.us and then your SISD six digit code or five digit code, uh, however many goes with that right there. Once you get to here, there's, uh, I guess, 30, 31, 32, 33. There's four pages. Two of them are like a big map. One of them shows the pyramid of kings to churches to nobles to knights all forth. The other one shows the idea of mannerism, uh, which is going to show like a map layout of acreages and who owns this and rotating from spring to fall plants and, uh, you know, what the king owned and what the king did not. So you really only read two pages. You can look at the maps on the other one. When you get to and you're done reading, <clears throat> go to Canvas. On 13-2, there's a quiz. You, you're not going to read about questions one, two, and three. So here are the answers. And the answers right here, if I move this down, are D, B, and C for one, two, three. Okay? So you can go ahead and fill those in on chapter 13-2 quiz, and those are your first three answers. You'll finish answering those eight questions. There is a short three question deal about mineralism and feudalism for a discussion topic. Answer those three questions based upon factual evidence that you found uh, in the chapter and what you've got from the quiz. Uh, and then one of them like, why does feudalism exist? Why was it beneficial to both parties? How is it beneficial to both parties? And you just kind of you know type in your answer uh, with some factual basis behind those three, okay? So page 360 through 363, my HRW, Go to Canvas, chapter 13-2 uh, quiz. Here's your first three answers. Finish the quiz and answer three discussion questions. All right. Anybody have any questions about anything? Everybody good? All right. Let's roll on.